Real change comes from compound effects of hundreds of small decisions over time that accumulate to produce remarkable results. Our decisions are significantly influenced by our thoughts, and what we know about our brain is changing at a breathtaking pace. So what makes us who we are? Hey friends, welcome back to the channel and to the first episode of the book club where I discuss about the key insights from some of my favorite books. Today we're going to talk about Thinking Fast and Slow by the Nobel laureate Daniel Kahneman. So Daniel Kahneman is an experimental psychologist who was born in Israel and who have changed how we think about thought process. To those of us seeking to engineer this intelligent system, here it is. The central dogma of the book is the dichotomy between two modes of thoughts which are called System 1 and System 2. We all know thinking is really uncomfortable. Now ask yourself, what is 5 plus 5? It's easy, 10. And that's where you use your System 1. But now ask yourself, what is 15 into 45 plus 15? That's where your System 2 kicks in. So 90% of the decisions that we take are based upon system one, which is fast, intuitive, and more emotional. A real life example of using system one is when you're chased by a bear or playing a video game of your choice where you need to take an immediate action. On the other hand, system two is more slow, deliberative, reasoning, and more logical. An example would be rationalizing your move while playing chess or investing in a stock market. I'm going to briefly discuss about the top phenomenon or the core message that I gathered from this book and the other repetition, cognitive ease, law subversion and priming. Frequent repetition tricks us into believing something false. The more we are exposed to something, the more we trust it. A typical example would be a company advertising the product. The more we are exposed to the product, the more likely we're going to buy it. For example, carrots are good for the eyes or when the politicians campaign, um, they distribute the false information and if it's repeated on the TV, then it gets engraved in people's mind. Which leads me to the next concept, which is priming. Priming is a phenomenon in which exposure to one stimulus influences how a person responds to a subsequent stimulus, which makes a huge effect on our decision making. In an experiment, people's judgment were greatly influenced when they've been asked to choose a bag full of random numbered balls and then been asked to guess the value of a bottle of wine. Guess what? The guesses are fairly close to the number they have chosen, which is a typical example of priming. Another example is from the movie Focus, where Will Smith asked a man to pick the number he wanted him to pick by using priming. The pain of losing is psychologically twice as powerful as the pleasure of gaining. The loss felt from money can feel worse than gaining the same thing. Loss aversion refers to an individual tendency to prefer avoiding losses to acquire the equivalent gains. Simply put that, it's better not to lose 100 pounds than to find 100 pounds. In a psychological experiment on how people react to gains and losses, they've been asked to flip a coin and bet with 100 pounds and if they lose they have to give 10 pounds and if they win they can gain 15 pounds but people mostly disagree to participate to tempt more people into participating this time they've been asked to flip 50 times and now we know that the probability of winning has gone up significantly some agree to participate but a larger proportion disagree to participate this loss aversion is a big player in taking risk or rather not taking risk. Mathematic equivalents are all not the same as the psychological equivalents. We feel more ease than strain when information is presented more clearly. Cognitive ease is nothing but how easily our brain can process information. Repeated experience, primed idea and a good mood puts us into cognitive ease. The less a person has to face cognitive strain, the more likely he's gonna accept the ideas. In this typical example, participants were asked to follow the instructions for a specific exercise, which was written in two different forms, and have been asked how much time it takes to complete the exercise. The participants who read the second one answered with a number that was as twice as long as the first one. Learning how to control and direct your mind and emotions are really crucial. Remember, it is the first thought 
prime force that drives the human experience. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another interesting